realize it, then the real magic begins. So that's what we have to do. We have to advance. Not that we stay stuck in the offensive stage, but we have to really repent and see, oh, I'm so offensive. When I chant, I don't get ecstatic symptoms. What's wrong with me? I must be uh, performing some of these offenses huh? because uh, it's clearly stated in the songs of the Acharyas that as soon as we chant the holy name with pure intention that all the ecstatic symptoms such as crying, standing of the hairs on end and so forth will manifest. And we've all experienced these things in some small measure when chanting. That's why we're devotees. I don't know of any devotee who hasn't experienced some internal uh, revelation of Krishna, some self-revelation of the Supreme, uh, some confidential internal uh, experience. And that's why we're devotees. That's why we have any trust in the Holy Name at all. So we should not consider that the glories of chanting are imaginary, but simply that we haven't reached them yet, or they're delayed. Uh, the, the Holy Name is perfect and complete, and as soon as we utter the Holy Name, the, the complete result is there. But we are delaying the result because of our offenses. Uh, we're pushing it away. We're blocking it. Blocking it means we're not allowing it to impact our consciousness because we're on the wrong level or the wrong platform of consciousness. So the glories are not imagination, but when we're in the offensive stage, they're simply delayed. And as soon as we correct our offenses, we'll get the full result. And the sixth offense is related to give some interpretation on the holy name of the Lord. You know, this means some speculation or some rationalization that... Well, when you chant, you see, it, it regulates the breathing, and then because of the effects of pranayama, then you get some subtle changes of consciousness and energy, and therefore you start to feel really good, and so on and so on like that. Uh, this, this is not correct. No. The, the holy name is really transcendental. And there's no need to interpret the holy name of the Lord. If you want to know the meaning of the holy name of the Lord, it's given in the Srimad Bhagavatam. I mean, the whole Srimad Bhagavatam is the meaning of the holy name of the Lord. Okay? Especially the Hare Krishna Mantra. If you want to know the meaning of the Hare Krishna Mantra, it is the entire Srimad Bhagavatam. It takes that much to explain the meaning of this simple mantra. Uh, because the purport is extremely deep. It includes the entire science of rasa, the entire Sankhya philosophy, the, the theistic Sankhya philosophy. It includes the meaning of Vedanta. Uh, it's, it's very big. So one should study Srimad Bhagavatam very carefully and realize the meaning of the holy name in that way. The seventh offense is to commit sinful activities on the strength of the holy name of the Lord. It should not be taken that because by chanting the holy name of the Lord one can be freed from all kinds of sinful reaction, one may continue to act sinfully and after that chant Hare Krishna to neutralize his sins. Such a dangerous mentality is very offensive and should be avoided. So everybody does this to some extent when they first become a devotee. Oh, I'll chant Hare Krishna, but I can't stop my sins right away. I'll, I'll continue to commit some of my sinful activities, but then I'll chant and I'll get purified. Well, this is exactly why we advise people not to chant the Hare Krishna mantra until they can follow the four regulative principles nicely. Uh, some devotees criticize us that Prabhupada never preached like that. But actually you can find quotations in Prabhupada's books that support this. That if one is not sufficiently educated or not sufficiently developed in his devotional life, his spiritual life, or his purity, that 
one should not chant the Hare Krishna mantra or worship Radha Krishna because the Hare Krishna mantra is the direct personification of Radha and Krishna. And so one should not attempt to enter Radha Krishna Leela until one is pure. Uh, otherwise he'll cause some offense. This seventh offense against the holy name, this is exactly uh, what is caused when we allow people or encourage people to chant the holy name of the Lord in any uh, condition of life. No, one should be free from sinful activities. Then one can chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. The Panchatattva Maha Mantra, Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vas Adi Gaur Bhaktivinda. That mantra is free from any offenses. So even if you're the most sinful rascal, you can chant the Panchatattva Maha Mantra and that will be okay. You won't cure any um, sinful reactions or any offenses. But if you are st still committing sinful activities and you try to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, you will create offenses and they will become an obstacle in your spiritual life. So be very, very cautious. We uh, advise people, if they want a nice mantra to chant, that they chant Vishnu Sahasranam or they chant the uh, Dvadasakshara Mantra. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. These mantras are powerful because they're Vishnu mantras. They'll give all benedictions that one could ever want, but uh, they are made for people who are not perfectly pure, uh, people who still have some uh, personal desires or some uh, desire to enjoy material opulence or even spiritual opulences. But those who chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, they need to be completely pure because of the nature of the mantra, the mood of the mantra. It's very, very dangerous to commit sinful activities and chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So please don't do it. This is one of our unique uh, principles and how we avoid so many disasters. See, when Srila Prabhupada was teaching, he had temples. And generally, people would come to the temples and go to the Sunday feasts, for example, and in that atmosphere they would be purified and at least while they were there they weren't performing any sinful activities you see and so they also had immediate access to the temple if they wanted to become a devotee that's how you became a devotee you moved into the temple so nowadays we don't have uh, such a fortunate situation especially preaching over the internet we have no idea what kind of activities people are involved in so for us to recommend that everyone and anyone chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra in any condition of life would be irresponsible and would lead to creating offenses. We wait until they become our students and they become established in the teaching um, and capable of maintaining the four regulative principles. And then we advise, okay, now you chant Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Up until then, you know, you chant Dvadashakshara Dvara Mantra, you chant Panchatattva Mantra, or you chant Vishnu Sahasranam, or all of those. And that will help you resolve your material issues and reach the stage of purity uh, to where you can chant Hare Krishna. The eighth offense is to consider the chanting of Hare Krishna one of the auspicious ritualistic activities offered in the Vedas as fruitive activities. Karmakanda. So the aim of the Hare Krishna mantra is not fruit of gain. That means material advancement in the sense of pious activities, economic development, sense gratification, and liberation. Uh, actually, chanting the Hare Krishna mantra can offer all of those things, but those are secondary. The real result of chanting the Hare Krishna mantra is that one develops love for Krishna and this is the most profound gift this is the greatest thing the best thing so don't think that by chanting this mantra I will get material benefits well you will 
but not by asking for them, not by uh, desiring them, but because Krishna is present in his name and he can see, oh, you need something to eat, you need a place to live, uh, you're my devotee, so I'm going to protect you. And then he'll give you access to some association of devotees or some uh, means of livelihood, or he'll arrange somehow or other to protect his devotee. He always does. This is my experience. This is the experience of many devotees. So if you're worshiping Krishna nicely, he will take care of you. Uh, you don't have to uh, consider that by chanting the mantra, now I'm going to get something out of it. That's called karma kanda. Uh, I'll do some service for God, and then we'll make a deal. <laughs> I'll do something for you, you do something for me. No, that's not love. Love means that one 